All right, I'm glad all you guys liked the uh, conversion video that we did on our Leopard 46. Now, you probably saw that we were doing that to a price point. We had a budget in mind, we knew how much we wanted to spend, and we really couldn't go over it. Of course, you can always go a little further. And our good friends on Top Secret have done exactly that. I challenge you to find a charter boat to cruiser conversion that is cooler than Top Secret. So this is a 2003 model built by Voyage Yachts in Cape Town. Uh, extremely well manufactured boats. It was built as a charter boat. It had six cabins en suite and a crew cabin for two. And we had it in charter for many years and it was used uh, and abused. And when we decided it's time for us to do something about it. Uh, we brought it back to Cape Town. Um, the engines were pretty shot. The gen sets that needed to be replaced. So I had a look at that and I said, well, what, what am I going to do with this boat? And that's when I sort of researched electric propulsion. I was going to have to redo the gen sets, have to redo the engines, probably get new ones. And I thought, well, why am I going to replace the same old technology with new old technology? That's we didn't need six cabins, <laughs> so we just chopped everything out. And we, you could stand right outside in the back, look forward, and you could see through there, right out into the front. There was nothing. It was just raw fiberglass. We just cut everything out. Took every bit of wire out, every bit of plumbing out, every single thing. We just chopped it out. And we kind of started from scratch. Anne Marie. <laughs> yeah, that's all she's got to do is laugh, man. I know, I just laugh. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> he comes up with the weirdest ideas. Um, right, cool, cool. Oh, thank you. First of all, what, can you give me some basic specs? Like, how big is this? How wide? It's, it's 31 feet wide. 31 feet wide. Yeah. My last boat was 33 feet long. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's very wide. And how long is it? 58. 58. Yes. Let's talk solar. Yeah, so on okay. the top here we've got 3,800 watts. So that's 3,800 watt panels. Um, I added them to a Lexan sheet, uh -huh. which you can get at Home Depot, because they get really hot. So the manufacturer says install them directly on whichever surface if you've got an RV or whatever it's going to go directly on the surface but they get so hot and what I noticed was on windy days when there was a lot of wind blowing the panels produced a heck of a lot more power they're getting too hot they're getting too hot so I did the Lexan sheeting with the holes on this side underneath so that the wind can blow underneath and cool them down I couldn't do this on my old panels Oh my, they're cooler than my panels. Yeah. And I got the glass ones. Yeah. That's so smart. So that has worked. And I found, a f yeah, so that has worked. So, and are these 12 volt panels? Or these these are 12 volt panels. And I have five in series, five in series, five in series, five in series. So that's 20 panels and that's my 48 volt. So I connect them up. And then I've got the rest connected up in in uh, sixes six okay. in series six in series six in series and six in series for the 24 volt okay so you have the banks completely divided I do so I have the house bank and I have the propulsion bank and those do the propulsion bank and these do the house bank so no crazy weird controllers it's just keep them separate wire them separate wire them separate yeah. yes and I've got four controllers for those and I've got two controllers for these so I would have stick stuck in another probably another four controllers on the house bank uh -huh. yeah the more controllers you have um, the better really yeah so if for, for each series string it's best to have a controller right, because so as soon as you have a bit of shading on on a boat you cannot stop the shading yeah it's kind of interesting let's just look over your shoulder I mean I've seen this with my own boat yeah this is how much shading we're talking about that can kill your voltage check this out I, hopefully it comes up on camera look at that that much that That's it, yes. Yeah. We'll drop it down. You can get half the output with a hand's worth of shadow on six panels. So <laughs> it's so ridiculous. The big, so the big uh, downside to using all these controllers is cost. Yes. Because controllers now, the MPPT charge controllers, it's they're like, not cheap. No. Yeah. The good ones not cheap. No, they're not cheap. 
But in terms of this much solar, yeah. what are we delivering? Uh, what's our average? Okay, so if I leave the boom where it is in the middle and we're just floating around in it, I'm probably getting about 13 kilowatt hours per day. If I take the boom and stick it to the side, um, 17. 17. Yeah. And has that been the that's been the average? That's the about years? yeah. That's yeah. about average. Yeah. So I can figure it out. It's a, you could say it is four times whatever your solar panel is is you're going to get for the day. So yeah. if you've got a hundred watt solar panel, you're going to get 400 watt hours out of it in a day. That's about. It. All right, quick little explanation here. Most of us are used to dealing with amp hours. That's how most of our batteries are measured. Our solar panels, on the other hand, are measured in watts. It really makes a lot of sense to, instead of talking about amp hours and watts, talk about watt hours. So what exactly is that? All right, an amp hour is amps times hours. Watts are amps times volts. So watt hours are watts times hours. So in application, let's say we've got a 100 amp hour battery. At 12 volts, that is a 1200 watt hour battery. For example, you could run a MacBook Pro computer like I'm editing this video on. Using that 100 amp hour battery at 12 volts, we would get 75 hours of use. It's pretty simple math, but it's useful to know. Yes. This thing slices. It does. It's pretty thick. What's the draft on it? it it's it's a, it's a heavy draft. It's yeah. five foot nine. Five foot nine. So it's one of the deepest catamarans. It's, it's kind of, we can, you can keep up there. with most monohulls on, yeah. yeah, into the wind, which is because our keel is just as deep as theirs. And we got two of them. So yeah, You're slicing. we are. And it is pretty fine. This is another thing I'm envious of. So on our Leopard, yes. another South African boat, uh, we deploy from just in front of the bridge deck. Yes. That's annoying. It can be annoying, yes. It, it can be annoying. It takes attention. Yes. So now you can just deploy right off the bow. Absolutely. Cool. So just press the button, the chain goes down, hook everything up here, hook the bridle up, and out it goes. Now, what do we have all the way up front? Is that a screecher? What is that? It's, I, I would call it a reaching sail. Okay. So it can handle maybe 70 degrees apparent wind to and it's good probably up to about 120 130 okay so i can loosen the luff and then i can use it as almost like an asymmetric nice um that's worth on a proper reach on a beam reach that's worth three knots versus the genoa and main that's it's sweet. ridiculously big it's and, and two thousand odd square feet that's massive yeah. this is your genoa this is your working jib yeah and then what do you call what's working on the baby stay here the baby sail, but it's a stay sail. It's a stay sail. Yeah. yeah, it's a stay sail. It's also a Genoa, so it's uh, it's 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 um, it does go past. So it's about 115 um, percent, and it's the most freaking amazing sail. Uh, I put this on, and it's it, it's worth about a knot. Yeah. on just about every point of sail. So this isn't just a high wind sail. No, and that's what the original intention was. I was thinking, ah, oh, you know, you're reefing this Genoa and you've got to sail out on, right in the front and you've got the, and it's not bringing the center of effort to the center of the boat where you want it. I'll rather stick as my third or fourth re sort of reef, Yeah. stick this thing on. And when I started playing around with it, I realized, wow, I mean, I can point really high with a sail because you're going into some serious apparent wind when you're going upwind in 20, 25 knots. Your apparent wind's like well over 30. Yeah, yeah. So two or three reefs in the main and this baby and I'm doing six knots upwind. So that's great. And on a reach, <laughs> I just got everything out, including <laughs> this thing and I'm going. So three spreaders, I, I changed the mast from its original configuration. Um, because this was the original boat had winches on both sides so you weren't driving from one position you had the winch on that side and a winch on that side and so when you tacked you had to run across tables and it was you know it was actually Plus, dangerous or you needed two people to do it it's right? a big boat so now you can run everything so now I run here. everything from there uh, so something this big you really got to run it up mechanically or it's going to take a long time uh, it, there's no ways I can get the halyard tight what's the purchase system we got I've got a two to one purchase. two to one okay. yeah cool so the one on the electric winch so i really love your organization here you, did you reorganize this yourself i did yeah, yeah. and it's i really installed fancy. it myself and did everything yeah. Yeah. all yourself all myself <laughs> yeah. oh the cockpit the cockpit so we took off um i'm not sure 
Traveller? No, we got the Traveller. You got the Traveller, right. But I, I, I had don't, a Traveller. I may switch it out. My Traveller's right. still working, but as soon as the thing busts... Yeah. No, nah, I'm switching it out. So this is called the German system? I a didn't even German know. sheeting system, yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes so much sense because you can control most of your twist. Absolutely. Mo okay. Most of it. Most of it. Yes. For cruising catamarans, racing cats are different, but for cruising cats, that's really all you need. It's more than enough. So, so a traveler is great for going upwind. Yeah. And for racing, travelers work great. Cruising boats don't go well upwind. And they're certainly not racing ones. <laughs> and you want to be going downwind, in which case your travel is a pointless thing. Right. It just right. You, what do you do with it? Um, and so this works out. For me, it was three lines versus two. Yeah. Because I, I had so much going on here that I, oh. I figured, well, I've got to do something. And so this went to two lines. And I changed the reefing. People said you couldn't do it on a sail this size to single line reefing. Um, so I've just got one. These are my these are my reefing lines. So that's first reef, that's second reef, and the third reef because the line will be so ridiculously long that is split up into two. So you would have the tack and the clue line to reef, but we just have one. And I modified the boom so that it can just be a single line. It goes up to the sail, down inside the boom, up to the sail, down, and across here. And there's a lot of I don't have any um, blocks. It's all friction rings, so mm -hmm. Antel friction rings, they work fantastic. You got one handy I've that we can this. show. Let's I've show this. people. Uh, this is it. This, this used is... to be a block, now it's a friction ring. Okay, two things about this. First of all, the cost. If you look at a block that can handle this size, like a snatch block. 900. 900 bucks for 900 a snatch block. It will do the exact same this. We've got several of these. I don't remember what I paid for them, but it couldn't have been more than $25 a piece. I think that's about 45 bucks. 45 bucks for the larger diameter. And what's also great about Dyneema line is just do yourself a little favor and a YouTube search and just teach yourself how to do some splicing with... And this stuff is so easy. It, it's so easy. Compared to the old line, this is so easy to splice. Yeah, I mean, you get one FID or a yeah. small FID kit and you can... You Absolutely. actually get into it, it's fun. <laughs> you do, yeah. You make all sorts of good stuff. It's not like the two strand. I mean, that stuff's just like... <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do a little... Uh... So I've got the little foot. Okay. So electric everything. Every single winch is electric. Yeah. Um, and you kind of have to at this size. Oh, yeah. It, there's too much force. I can't... I mean, this, I can't even turn this thing to sheet in properly. Yeah. I really... I need the help. And these have got uh, both speeds. Which so the outsides are fast. Yeah. The insides are slow. Okay. So the torque is our slow, slow speed. Correct. Yeah. So when we press outside on this winch, will go. I'll put the button. That's fast. Uh, now I can't turn it that quick by hand anyway. <laughs> and this is slow. And that's the torque. Speed. Uh, I definitely have cockpit envy. Now there is no Super other boat slick. quite like it because you'll never we see have this. this. <laughs> four controls. So this is for each motor because we have four motors. And Say that again. So we got four motors. We have four motors. Electric okay. motors. Four of them. <laughs> 15 kilowatts for each one. Maximum output. Uh, 12 kilowatts uh, continuous. And that there are no linkages here. This is all, no, it's all running by wire. Yeah. There's no linkages. And what happens if I touch it? Nothing. Nothing. It's switched off. Okay. So you can do what you like with it. You pull it out and then you can go forward and back. Yeah. And that, I don't know, people, if you can even hear it, there's nothing. It's just completely smooth. There's no friction like I got on my cable system. And so we just put that in and it's all locked up. Uh, okay. And, and these are the screens for each motor. Exactly the same configuration as that. Okay, so this is Ocean Volt, the Ocean Volt motors. Correct. Okay. They're Ocean Volt motors. Um, just because somebody on uh, one of our videos was asking about instruments, we yeah. did Raymarine just because there was Raymarine before and I was kind of doing piecemeal. Yeah. Any particular reason why your BNG? It's better. It's better. I had Raymarine. Yeah. Um, so I think for the sailing, cruising uh, market, pricing wise, they're pretty similar. Uh, functionality wise BNG's got quite a bit more for the cruiser and the sailor so they were they're aimed at the sailor whereas Raymarine is, wasn't really it's kind of just aimed at the boater so, so can I make one comment that um, actually we met 
a year or so ago. That's you were right. on your way up from South Africa. And you know, I'm, I'm, obviously the boat's quite impressive. But as I was walking up here, you said something to me. This is a year ago. Yeah. You said something to me that I was just like, uh, okay. Because I've seen 52s and 58s. I've seen the charter version of this boat. Yes. And you said, oh, I did it all myself. And I was well, like, I had some help, but yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I did have some help. <laughs> but, but you did this. Yes. I, yeah. I made this Bimini top from here myself with the help of a couple of guys uh, doing some grinding work for me and my friends came and helped me on the weekends and uh, yeah we we built all of this this whole section is all yeah. I, I don't know if the video is actually gonna show this but this is like professional level work and my question for you that I asked last year yeah I don't know if you remember I said what is it about doing Joko work or glass work it seems to separate what's obviously amateur work yeah. from what is, it's very hard to distinguish, Rian, that this was an owner designed, built. built. So, so yeah. what's, what's the difference? Um, I did have a little bit of input from the factory that built this boat. Okay. Cleaning surfaces probably before bonding. I knew all of this from the bit of help the factory gave me and YouTube, pretty much. Going on there and seeing how other people do stuff. And I used YouTube mainly as a source of how to do stuff. You got to sort out the good from the bad. No, that's and true. if if you, you know you look at ten videos and you see seven guys are doing it this way and three are doing it another way, you go the seven guy route because yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. forget the other three because there's so much junk out there and it hasn't cracked. No, um, it looks fantastic. It's fared with polyester. People said, ah, oh, you can't fare with polyester. Wait, wait, say it again. I think the camera missed it. So you fared it with polyester. Polyester fairing compound, yes. Okay, so a lot of people will maybe switch over and try and do a West system. Yes. And that's not that's the epoxy. same. It's not the same bond. Either. No, it's not the yeah. same. So this was a polyester boat. So gel coat is generally production boats are generally polyester. When I started this, I didn't know the difference between polyester and anything. It was just yeah. Um, but polyester is what this boat's made out of the polyester resin, and um, the fairing compound that I used is pretty much the resin mixed with some thickening agent and that's what I used and now that way I could get a mechanical bond and a chemical bond so in a way what you got is you've got the factory process you have replicated yes. the factory process except for the gel coat except for the gel coat correct but that's and got no molds no molds. we didn't this none of this is molded it's all done by hand in situ and it came out pretty okay I mean we had a a, a lightning strike and um, so there's a couple of holes from the old things that we had installed which I've changed and I've got to paint this up but this is pretty easy to paint yeah. it's literally roll and tip and then a polisher and then you polish it and it comes out looking like the rest okay of so what's your paint of choice because we're considering some paint what do you like I chose all grip all craft all craft okay because you can polish it and blend it okay um, and you can make it's kind of let's put it this way it lasts about as well as just the regular ore grip but for amateurs because if you can polish it you can polish it so if you do make a bit of a stuff up you can fix it uh, and you want to see what an electric engine looks like let's do it yeah this is an easy one I'm gonna open up the floor and probably a good angle from over there so that is an electric engine now that's the ocean vault yeah, and that's for size. I mean, it's we're not talking big here. It's a big frisbee. <laughs> All right. So, what was the original propulsion? So this boat had two 75 horsepower turbocharged Yanmar engines. So you had 150 horse. Correct. And the engines were in the back end. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And now we have a maximum of 60 kilowatts, which is probably around about 100 horse. Okay. At maximum, um, which. It's not going to last us more about 25 minutes on the battery. That's with everything. Okay. Um, we don't use anywhere near um, 100 horsepower or 60 kilowatts to get this boat going at a reasonable speed. Well, that's because you get the tender touch. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there, there are four of these. Just there to reiterate. Are, yeah. Sorry. There's four of these. Yeah. So is there a particular reason why somebody would use four smaller rather than two larger? No, no particular reason. No. So, Ocean Vault only produce 
a sail drive version of 15 kilowatts. Okay. So it's 12 kilowatts maximum power output. And it was felt that we should, I did all the resistance calculations and everything, and we just figured, well, if, if things get tight and you need to get off a lee shore, it's probably better to have a bit more horsepower. Yeah. Overkill. We could get rid of two of these engines and it would make very little difference. Yeah. So the torque in these electric engines is ridiculous. So one question that people have about electric is regen. Oh yeah. So can you do regen? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Tell it's me about incredible, it. Incredible actually. So even with the feathering or the folding props. Even with the folding props. Yes. So obviously po most people are looking to how is that possible? Yeah. Because when you're moving forward, the props are folding. All you got to do is spin them open by giving a little bit of throttle and just get those blades open and then just slack off in the water and just keep it there for a little while so they can spin and then you just gener gently slack off to almost zero, still creating a field. So you still need an electrical field in the motors and they just spin and now they're generators. Do you use that a lot? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. How much drag do you end up? It, look, it can be quite a bit uh, depending on what speed you're doing. Mm -hmm. They're not, I would say, if you're looking at regening a boat that's going to do less than seven knots, don't do it. It's not going to help. Mm -hmm. This boat generally goes seven knots and quicker. So we start regening about 200 to 300 watts per motor at seven knots, and it will slow you down half a knot. Um, but if you're doing 10? But if you're doing 10, it's gonna, we'll, we'll be getting four kilowatts out of it out of the and we have four kits so we could run the ac do washing run the dishwasher bake a cake <laughs> and we're still saying damn what are we going to do with the rest of the electricity and we've had no installation problems on this boat okay that is the biggest problem with electric boats people blame the electric engines it's the installation of the rest of the stuff that's the problem putting washers when you put a battery down a terminal on a battery. Normally that wouldn't be a problem, right? Because you, what, how many amps are you drawing? These things draw a thousand amps at 48 volts. That'll heat things up. Cables are this thick. That'll heat things up. You put a washer there, that becomes pretty much a fire risk. Now, when it, so when it comes to installation, it's very important. It wouldn't be in the past, but now it is very important. Yeah. So you, you gotta watch it. And most of the issues that I've come across, installation not the actual product the installation <laughs> you guys live well well we the, the deal was we're going to be at anchor a lot and i wanted the boat to be like an apartment uh 90 percent of the time we're at, at anchor yeah um and if it can feel like your house uh and i can make it feel like a house i had an older boat that i needed to do something with and this is what i did <laughs> anyway so this the dinghy out in our cockpit uh -huh. We wanted a, just a little social cockpit um, that the two of us could sort of sit in it and relax. So that's how I went about designing everything. And this is kind of Marie's seat and this is my seat. And they're kind of opposing one another. She's shorter than I am, so that we can kind of have a chat in the cockpit. If you've got people around, yeah, extra people. These glass sliding doors are for, the, for homes. It's not a marine product. People said I was crazy. Um, and they all slide out of the way and then this whole area becomes an open area and then you can have as many people as you want. So on the original boat, what would be... There was yeah. nothing above me on the yeah. original boat. Yeah. There was nothing here on the original boat. This is all manufactured. This is all manufactured and the dinghy used to sit here. Right. So this is where the dinghy would sit. Because voyage boats have... They used to have a, a wooden teak what do you call it? It's a... Uh, uh, they called it the dive platform. The dive platform, that's yeah. right. Which is a really cool design. It so is. So you're not swinging on davits. Absolutely. Yes. And it's nice to put your uh, fins in when you come and when you finish exactly. snorkeling in the slots. And it can just drain right over. Yes. So now you've got a little bit more of the <coughs> leopard design yes. davits. Exactly. <laughs> and, and you say that, I did get the idea from leopard. Yeah. Absolutely. So I thought I'd, I wanted to make it single-handed launch this this has a telescopic boom derrick in the in the boom and that's how the, the the dinghy was lifted up so you'd extend a pole a line would hang down you hook it up onto the dinghy pull the dinghy up go back there winch it in then drop it down onto the deck and really 
you needed somebody to manage the boat while you were managing the winch, right, right. which is pretty far away. And I said, this is, you know, I need to do something single-handed in, in case. And so this was the single-handed solution, was we've got an electric winch right there. I've got the little line over here. Just and this right pole just lifts up and down and the dinghy goes and I can do it alone. And I've got a remote control for all my winches. So I can get in the dinghy and just zzz, drop it into the water. So you can raise your dinghy from bed. Yes, I could. <laughs> Okay, so uh, there's work to be done sometimes, or at least the illusion of work, and this is one... What Would you call this the nav station, or is this the... This is my nav station. Yeah, this, is, this nav is pretty station. sexy, and uh, all folds up, and... That's where I drive. Yeah? Literally, the autopilot does everything, and I sit there, and I just drive, all on remote control. Yeah. Um, the autopilot drives a lot better than me. I might be able to sail mm -hmm. by setting the sails, but steering, I'm not a helmsman. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the autopilot's way better. And it, is it just me, or have the autopilots like really gotten a lot better? They are so much better. About ten years ago, we went from analog sort of systems yeah. to now it's all solid state. Yeah. S gyro compasses. Absolutely. And the speed and accuracy is it's ah, just gone through the fantastic. roof. Fantastic. Yeah. And you can see what that autopilot is doing. It, it knows. Yeah. It knows things I don't know. No, it, 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 they actually learn. Yeah. So they're actually starting to modify them, their reaction for the sea state. Absolutely. And, yeah, sail trim. And All right, so we this again originally was... Outside. This so was this outside. Was like your cockpit on your boat. Yeah. Everything was open. Let me, let me just swing around here. So there was no window or anything over there. This didn't look anything like it looks now. This is a whole new roof we stuck on. Um, this wasn't here. This is a structural member now. This wasn't here. Okay. Um, none of this was here. This is all new. There's air conditioning units underneath here. There's, it's, it's all changed completely. So it was all outside. The helm's position wasn't where it is now. It was uh, actually a little bit more outboard. It was one winch on that side and one winch on this side. And you would step up and go and do your thing and step up and go and do your thing over there and there were plastic screens in the front and I thought it's such a beautiful area to be inside why would you need the sides open right. uh, and this was a bone of contention between Marie and myself she's like how can you wreck an outside area like that? and I said well look at the inside there's no opening windows to the side there's right. a good reason for that yeah. <laughs> Why do we need opening windows on the side? Right. Best thing we ever did. I mean, I think if you ask Marie now, she'll say this is a fantastic there area. It's even more usable than so before. So much space. And I noticed on, on this boat right away was the really clean joinery and woodwork. Now, did you do stuff like this yourself or uh, would you hire this out? So, um, some of it I did myself and some I got a carpenter in to come and help me. Yeah. Yes. So, all the design, this is really thin veneer on top of a really thin marine ply for weight um, and so it's it's all sort of mitre jointed and it's as light as I could get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had dinner on here with you guys uh, last year and it was a day like today it was hot the shades right. were up and I just remember forgetting that we were even on a boat. Right. <laughs> this is so <laughs> massive we got yes two steps down so this would be our lowest point in the bridge deck Yes. Well, yeah, well, that would be... Okay. okay. Yes. So what, what's underneath this, this part of the floor? Okay, so we've got some storage underneath here. Uh-huh. And we've got some storage underneath here. And underneath here is nothing. There is a void and it's a double layer of boat. Okay. So it's, it's kind of part... Because it's so wide, it forms part of the structure. Gotcha. This is our main second... There's two main bulkheads on catamarans. Yeah. This is one of them. And... That is the other one, and that's the really important bulkhead because that's where the mast is. Yeah, a lot of compression. A us. lot of compression. On okay, so we have one step down. So this is just taking part of the void that would be in the bridge Correct. deck. Correct. That is literally on, you're standing on the bottom of the boat. Okay. Yeah, so that is the height difference. So Correct. something about some of the older voyages is they are lower in the water. Yes. So. And so is this one. And so is this one. Correct. So, when you're in a seaway, yes. and you're going upwind, yes. what's it like standing on here? It's okay on this boat. Okay. But, this boat might as well be a mona hole when it's in a really rough sea, because the water is touching under the bridge deck 
a lot of the time. Okay. You can hear it and you can feel it. Um, luckily, this particular boat, there is that void and so structurally it's quite sound. You don't get any vibration. On their smaller boats, it's not like this. Yeah. So you can actually feel the floor lifting a little bit when a wave really slams. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and this boat does slam a lot. But because it's quite a big boat, and because of the double floor, it's not as severe, but it's as noisy as hell. Yeah. But you go up wind like you're on rails. We do go up wind pretty well. Yes, we can point pretty well. This is gorgeous. So what's the origin of the cabinetry? So it's all done in Induction? glass fiber. Okay. This is a thing called Phoenix, which okay. is a laminate which we glued on. Gotcha. Um, these cabinet doors are actually made of cardboard all right. for weight. So they're actually, these drawers are all made of cardboard and spray painted. And these are all built, we built these all in. So the, the cupboards are all, have all got sort of structural members in, in support of the mast compression on, on this particular bulkhead. Gotcha. So this is just...